Okay, here we are. This is part three of this shed build, which is to pour this concrete slab. And today's video is going to be a little bit longer because I'm showing a half day of prep, just moving the concrete bags from the store to the work site. And number two, I'm going to show a sample work plan I typically have for each stage of the project. And third, the concrete, pouring the concrete just had so many different parts to it. So let's see how it went. And the day started with pickup at the store, picking up the first of three loads of 25 bags of 80 pound concrete. 25 bags is quite a stress on the Chevy Colorado suspension system. That's a little over the load max. And this is William. William is my hired help for the day. And William is the son of another wonderful set of neighbors we have, Dave and Mary. William also helped me haul the crushed rock and didn't get on video that day. But here we are moving that concrete, getting to the end here. That's 75 bags, 80 pounds, so we moved a lot. Uh, we were expecting rain. I wasn't gonna be using this concrete for another five or six days. And so expecting rain, made sure to cover with plastic starting from the bottom up first. And then a second layer top down, getting that tape down, totally covering it. Did have an issue with the duct tape. The glued part got away from the fabric part. That was interesting. Just moving on here, getting this all taped in. So then let's look at a project plan for this particular step, pouring the concrete. So each step in the process or each step in the project, I've got four parts. So I've got materials needed, tools needed, and a little further down, we've got safety, and then the actual steps. So this just helps me plan, get things ready during the week, getting ready for the weekend, getting all the tools and materials ready. Um, from a safety perspective, just think through, or if somebody's with me, then we're talking through our safety briefing, making sure nobody gets hurt. Um, you'll meet Brandon here in a little bit. Fun fact, Brandon's dad is a safety supervisor in his job. So when I mentioned to Brandon we'd be having a safety briefing, he smiled and chuckled a little bit. And here's Brandon, my hired help for the day. Brandon is the son-in-law of some great friends of ours, Kevin and Cindy. So here you see Brandon just blowing the leaves out uh, that had collected over the week. And then next you'll see Brandon lay down some wire mesh. And the size of this wire mesh worked well in the area of the concrete pad. You can see Brandon laying down the first wire mesh here. I call that lane one in the far left. And then the middle lane, lane two, he laid down there. And then lane three right here. And then um, I've got a fifth piece of mesh that Brandon's going to use these wire cutters and put the Put those pieces right where he's stepping right there kind of fill in lanes two and three using the wire cutters loaned to me by his father-in-law kevin and next you'll see the mud mixer itself uh, this is a great machine for mixing concrete for diy jobs this is unlike a um, concrete drum mixer uh, you've got a hopper up top you're going to break your bag over the blade and then down below you'll have your hose intake coming from your water source uh, next to your house for most people. There's a hose there for spraying and rinsing off. And then up top you've got in the middle, you've got a water dial. This is where you control how much water is being injected into the mix down below. To the right, you've got a, a, an on off. It's actually a reverse and forward switch, real handy. And down below we see the two water injectors that are, um, that's where the mixing is happening. happening. That water's injecting to the concrete mix. The auger is mixing up the two, and by the time it gets to the end of this tube, hopefully it's in its desired mix. I watched several YouTube videos where people were using this mud mixer, and it seemed like the right water level was about a 50. So we started out with that, and this is how it came out. That looks pretty wet. We're gonna dial it back. pretty good so we started the water level at 50 it was clearly too soupy and we dialed it back to 25 and we had an opposite problem 
So we had a wet batch and a dry batch. We mixed that together. We landed at about 30 or 32, and that worked out really well. It was a good, consisti cons good consistency. Um, and once we got to that spot, we were cooking with olive oil. And Brandon was in charge of keeping that hopper full of concrete. And this dude worked his tail off. 80 pound bags, over 70, 75 bags that day. And the key thing here is the hopper is in lane two, pouring into lane one. And we're gonna move over to lane three, move the machine into lane three to pour lane two. And then we are discussing, I thought we would pour from outside the form into lane three, but Brandon had a great idea. He said, why can't we just pour lane three from lane three and turn the hopper? So you'll see that in a little bit. And here we're just doing a little screening, just making sure we're level, getting to the right um, amount of concrete with the rake. And then back to pouring lane two while the machine is in lane three. And then Lisa was leaving for the day, and so she stopped by to visit, and check on the progress. It was nice to get a little visit from her, and then we got back to it. So getting two-thirds of the way done with lane two here, and the machine was just rocking along. Brandon was doing great moving all that concrete. And this is my buddy Lance, who's bringing over his space heater, his uh, propane space heater. It was a very cool morning, North Texas, end of February, low 40s. Um, so Lance brought this space heater over that's gonna help. Once the concrete is poured, we're gonna put this heater on there. And that'll help set things up. Pull that pin. So now we're just gonna fill here. That's me out. Isn't that sweet? And so that rotating hopper worked really nicely. It helped us keep the machine inside the form on level ground, which is a big advantage using this machine. Getting to the end here, we're able to pull it outside of the form and then just pour the rest. Just working through what is the right amount of concrete. And then here we start our screeding. Just gonna work that screed all the way down. Taking down the high spots, working in the low spots, we come back, filling in some low spots, just taking off any excess concrete. Then just working the bowl float here to get a nice uh, finish, pushing down some aggregate, pulling up the cream. A little bigger than what I was anticipating to handle, but it worked fine. And then just looking at everything, it's really, really wet. So this is where we'll start moving Lance's space scooter around the parts of concrete to help that set up. Brandon is starting to work the edging and I'm gonna tap the outside of the form just to work out any air bubbles. And next you'll see Brandon and I are gonna start working through where we would put the anchor bolts while the concrete was still wet. This was the plan. Okay, so the goal here is we put this anchor bolt in the concrete when it's wet. We want that the part that's sitting out of the concrete be enough to cover the two by four, the depth of the washer, the depth of the nut, and I have a little bit on top to tighten it. So that's the goal. We'll see how it works. So what Brandon's doing is he's marking, we measured the right spot, we're marking a black mark. So when we put these into the concrete, we wanna see that black mark. And then we'll hand trowel around it to smooth around. And here you can see the plan worked well in this one corner where it was still wet when we put them in. Every place else, the concrete is kind of set up and so plan B, I will drill those anchors in later. So here we're just um, starting to do some troweling around the edges, pulling that cream to the top, starting to clean up a little bit around the work site. And then um, to get to the middle, I bought a styrofoam pad or a couple pads, help me get towards the middle and just kind of trowel my way out. So after finishing the concrete, then it was time to take the extra bags of concrete back to the store. Uh, the online calculator, I think I did, determined I needed 67 bags. I bought 75 and 16 extra. So I didn't quite get the math right there, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So take a look at how the impact on the suspension here.
And here's the finished concrete pad. There are definite signs that it was done by an amateur, uh, but it's level, it's square and it's solid. I think this will provide a really good foundation for this shed and hopefully provide good support for the shed and help the shed last longer. And that'll do it for this part three of this shed build. Thank you for watching. See you in part four.